World's toughest programmer. How are you doing? Peter Cohen, I'm great. How are you? Excellent. Mike Lee on BMF. Uh, is BMF on Twitter? If you're not following him, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Also on app.net. Yes, indeed. On app.net, too. So, um, you have a, a fairly new venture called uh, New Lemurs. Mm -hmm. And um, you're doing some really cool stuff with... Uh, um, Gaming software. I mean, it is primarily gaming software, mm -hmm. but meet very meaningful gaming software. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, you know, we're a different kind of game company because our goal is not to entertain people or make games or, for that matter, make a bunch of money. Our goal is to make people smarter. And we're really trying to educate people and we're trying to find the best way to educate people. And we thought, you know, if you had some really nice science visualizations, you're halfway to a game already. And then we started thinking about what games really are, and we realized that a game is really nothing but a bunch of small lessons that you're learning. And the fun in a game is in learning those lessons, learning the rules of the game, right? You become better at a game because you master the system of the game. But those games are just arbitrary systems made up by game makers to entertain you. If you replaced the arbitrary systems with a natural system, just by learning to play the game like you do, you would be learning. This wouldn't be an educational game in the traditional sense, and it sure as hell wouldn't be gamified education. It would just be a game, but it would be teaching you something. So how have you applied that in, in your first product? So the first game that we made is a game called Lemur's Chemistry Water. It's about lemur's chemistry and water. So basically, it's a casual game, and it's a very recognizable casual game dynamic. You have these two elements, let's call them hydrogen and oxygen, and you combine them together. And due to the different combinatorics of the fact that you have these sort of pairs of bubbles, then you're making different combinations. And all of the combinations are deadly, except for one, where you have two of the hydrogens and one of the oxygens in a configuration that we call water. You drop those into the plant, the plant grows. You drop one of the other ones into the plant, the plant becomes damaged. And so it's a very simple game dynamic, except that it turns out that this whole thing with the water the hydrogen, the oxygen, and the ways in which they go together, that's all true. That's all based on actual chemistry. It's based on the latest research out of Princeton. And so just by playing this little casual game, no more tricky or, 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 or you know, complicated than something like Bejeweled, you're actually experiencing hands-on chemistry in the way that I wish I could have experienced chemistry when I was in school. What is the uh, age group that you're trying to hit with this? Well, the age group we're trying to hit is the age group that uses the iPad, which is the platform that we're on, which is everybody. Which is everybody. Right? Um, but it's really interesting because that has been a lot, like, that is a design ideal, right? But realistically, that's not necessarily true. And the funny thing was when we first made the game, when we first released the game back, uh, you know, in, in November of last year, it was just the game engine. You know, we still had a lot, you know, more that we wanted to do with it. And we did a lot of testing back and forth between kids and adults, and we never could quite get something that was equally approachable to both groups. And so we erred on the side of kids. And so what we ended up with was a game that anybody could play, a cat could play, until you got to be about 10 years old and your brain started being filled with all of this information, and then all of a sudden you would cease being able to understand the game. And so we ended up in this really weird situation where kids would get the game, but adults would be totally baffled. And even where adults would feel dumb in front of their kids because the kids would be doing stuff and, and the adults would have no idea. They couldn't even make something up. And so then, you know, we, we, we spent another several months and worked with a lot of really good people like Matt Gemmel, Guy English, you know, a lot of people threw in on what we needed to do to make this game more approachable. You know, really made a nice menu system, pacing, a bunch of power-ups and unlocks and all of that kind of stuff. We ended up with something that's a lot of fun that adults can totally get into, play with their kids. But all of the, you know, tutorial menu chrome that we had to put in there to make it approachable to everyone, a four-year-old is not going to get past the menu of the game anymore. The game they can still play, but the stuff that adults need, little kids are not going to get past anymore. But the way that we've thought about it is that, you know, even though we made something to be kid-friendly, we've really made educational games for adults. We've stayed away from bright primary colors. We've stayed away from bright primary sounds. We've tried to make everything in a non-irritating, high-polish way that adults expect, that an adult would enjoy. But we've used what the iPad provides, things like 11-finger multi-touch. We've used my own kind of crazy social gaming theories, and we've made something where you can play it by yourself. You'll have a good time with it. It doesn't feel like you're playing a kid's game. 
but you can play it with your kids. You can play it with your four-year-old. You can play it with your cat. So where do you take it from here? What's the next step? Well, there's kind of several different places we can go with it. You know, obviously there's a lot more games I'd like to explore. There's a lot more I'd like to explore with this game. Um, one thing we've noticed is that when you put this in front of kids, because it's so fun to play together, when you put a bunch of kids together with this game, they start making up their own games with it. And we do that too when we play it. And so I'd like to make some little remixes where you just take the engine and, and just take the different games that kids have made up and just make little, you know, cheaper, simpler versions and just spin those off, right? Obviously, there's a lot more of chemistry we'd like to do, and there's a lot more science that I'd like to explore. I'd like to do a lot more of the science visualization stuff of it. Even if I never make another game, I just love the science visualization, you know, touching molecules. It's really cool. But really what I want to do this next year is that, you know, as a developer, there's a lot of work that happens after you ship, but before you, you know, retire to the south of Spain, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of landmines there still. You know, a lot of work has been done to getting it out the door, but once you get out the door, there's a lot of stuff that's really, really way too difficult. And I would like to work on some of that stuff, you know, and not only that, but we had to do a lot of, I mean, a lot of work went into this game and a lot of people put a lot into this game and we had to do it. I mean, we wrote the whole thing in UI kit and you, you wouldn't believe it, you know, how nicely everything performs and how many images we have and everything. People can't believe their performance is that good. You know, an example of that, we do all of this like text art where other people are using sprite sheets for their text. We're using the actual, you know, UI kit text facilities to actually draw some nice text, little core graphics up in there, core image all over the place. But there's a lot of technique in there and the workflows that we use for a lot of this post-production stuff is also in there. So what I would love to see by this time next year I want every developer out there to be so intimately familiar with everything about this game because of tutorials, because of things we've open sourced, because of you know, workflows that we've published. Because when we publish that stuff, not only are we giving back, but what I find is people can't help but say, I have an even better workflow for you, or I know a way that you can do that better. And that's what this whole game has been about, us doing as well as we can do, showing it off to somebody else, them saying we can do it better, us doing it better, it getting you know, in front of somebody else. A rising tide raises all boats. That's exactly it. Yeah. Very cool. Where can people find out more information about the game? Well, you can find out all about Lemur's chemistry at le.mu.rs slash chemistry. Very good. And, of course, on the App Store. Yeah, it's on the App Store now. For how much? Uh, right at this very moment, I think it's $3.99. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.